You're watching Oilers Nation Radio. Good morrow, Good fair morrow. listeners. Good morning Good this afternoon. Good morning this afternoon. Oilers Nation Radio, episode 900,006. I don't even know what we're at anymore. We stopped counting. We do count on Apple. Nation Dan, Liam, Tyler, Rick, Bag Milk. Oh, I thought you were going to ask each of us what number we were thought. Oh, we were hey, on. let's do it. What number, Dan? 267. Can we get the actual number yeah, by the end of this? Right 267 it. for Dan. You actually got the answer, Liam? Yeah, so I want Liam's not allowed to play. Mm-hmm. Tyler. What did you say, 267? Yeah. I'll say 398. I'm trying to remember where we were before, <laughs> I and I want to go with... I'm going to go with three, about it, I'm we going went, 302. Because we went one a week to two a week, then we go back down to one a week. We used summer. to count them for a while, but then you were know. giving us a lot of BS answers from across the, <laughs> that room over there. Uh-huh. That was like, I'm sure he's used 900,006 at least once. I'm going to go 412. See, that's the correct answer. answer. What did you say, then? 267, I think. 302. 398. 398. 412. If I play him, Price, price is, right. is right. Got him. Tyler wins. What are we at? 360. Even He's uh, over. No, I win. Is right. He's is over. I win. Over. Oh, I thought he was just closest. <laughs> Rick, Rick wins. wins. And the David. prize is my friendship. So as you, this is 360. Price well. is right in Great Britain is different than Price is right. We yeah, don't have right. game shit. We have deal or no under. deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's closest while also being over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got a lot to talk to you today and not a lot of time to get to it. So I'm going to start off with a shout out to Wendy's for Daily Face Off Survivor. We're going to get to the delicious debate, but every all-star needs a sidekick to support them. Just like every Wendy's meal needs six piece nuggets. It's like every rose has its thorn. And right now, Wendy's is teaming up with Daily Face Off Fantasy to bring you weekly prizes like free nuggos, burgers, and more. So if you think you're an export in all things hockey, why don't you prove it? If you aren't already, Start adding that six piece to your Wendy's order for just three forty nine. It's a dynamic duo, even if you never saw it coming. Sign up for Wendy's Daily Face Off Survivor, presented by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. So they're doing this thing, and they have this thing called the Nuggie. It's like a blanket thing, but it looks like a big chicken nugget. Mm. You can kind of see it there. It's like TikTok. a. It's a Snuggie. Yeah, but the so, Nuggie. So every day this week at three forty nine Eastern, because three forty nine nuggets. Hour time. 149 our time which is seven minutes from now they're giving six. away a bunch of them on their TikTok. six minutes now so i'm going to say dialed in i'm going to try win one live on the pod i want to wow. win one do you have wow. your phone? yeah go what to the Wen- do? wendy's canada on tiktok and you gotta wait i think they'll like go live or something fun right. fact liam every rose has its thorn played every night at the bar i was a bouncer at for two and a half was that in years. halifax mm. it was in halifax do you know that dan lived in halifax liam? You know i didn't know that every mm. single night to close out the bar was you know nathan mckinnon played for halifax Halifax Moose. I did. I watched him play. I had season tickets in 2011. Do you know that wow. Moosehead is also a beer? It is. Also are are is they lager. from Halifax? They are from Halifax. Whoa. So yeah. what's the deal with Mooseheads though? Uh it was the it was the a lot of hunters. Corporate huh. a lot back of hunters. in the day. They bring the heads over and they hang them on just walls head, everywhere. Just <laughs> Hockey you know? teams currency at one point. Their mm-hmm. own uh, mm-hmm. operating costs. So the Moosehead brewery three Mooseheads for stepped a bacon in and, and paid a large chunk of it. <laughs> <laughs> got the naming rights for a while. Oh, and the I, logo was actually the Moosehead Brewery logo until they changed it in, I think, the t- mid-2000s. I believe all of that is incorrect. What uh, <laughs> Rick and I said over here is actually factual, where Rick said trade three Mooseheads. You got a Baconator. For a Baconator or bacon- tickets to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mooseheads was actually were currency. A murdered for a very good deal. Mm-hmm. Cool yeah. logo, though. Great logo. Moosehead coming out of an H. <laughs> Wouldn't make sense if it was his rear end, if you know what I'm saying. It's true. It's true. That would be in moose ass. Tyler, what is um, the delicious debate? <laughs> yeah, you guys really threw me off with that one. Um, <laughs> Every rose has its thorn. He's counting down the seven minutes till he goes. Yeah, because you want a nuggie. Yeah, I'm five minutes away from potentially winning a nuggie. Uh, show it to Wendy's. What letter grade do you give Adam Henry <laughs> for his first week as an oiler? It's a mid burp conversation. Yeah, what lettered grade do we give Adam Henrique? He's played four games, got one assist. He's centering the third line currently with Evander Kane. Picked up his first point the other day. Sniper Connor Brown. I have mm-hmm. seen nothing really Period. negative out of him. <laughs> I haven't seen very much that was overly positive out of him. So he's just ca- quietly doing his things as he's getting his feet wet with this team. I'll give him like a... We'll give him a B. I'll give him a C. Ooh, because C's get degrees. Therefore, it's <laughs> probably around a passing grade. Yeah. He's been fine. I don't really luck out for him. 
but I haven't noticed him do anything bad, like Rick said. So I'd like to see more, of course. But sure. he's also Come trying on. to find chemistry with Kane and Brown, who also haven't played with each other all season. So that whole line is just kind of a bit of a, a mush. But they got a big goal the other day, so hopefully that's uh, uplifting for the three of them. I think back to the Daily Faceoff live trade deadline special. I believe it was Colby Cohen that said, don't judge Stop a guy believing. too, too much. Well, obviously. <laughs> Shout out to Journey. <laughs> don't judge a guy too much for a few weeks until after he gets there so he can settle in and kind of... Dwayne Rollison. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that, We've Rick. seen this before. I was here in 2006 with the... You were in Halifax? The acquisitions. No, yeah. No, I was in Halifax. That's true. But I was a fan of the Oilers uh, in 06. And we acquired Dick Tarnstrom and to, not Tony Samalainen, uh, Sergey Samsonov. Mm -hmm. uh, all those guys Star came out with Check. Dwayne Rollison. January. And, and for about two and a half weeks, we thought the world was over because the Oilers could not string together a couple wins in a row. And like Dwayne they Rollison. They gave up a first was, round pick for Dwayne Rollison, yeah. Dan. That's and so I, I get that. I heard that today on Oilers Nation every day with Tyler and Liam uh talking about, you know, like That's the, the, the cost of, of the acquisition. <laughs> what what is it? That's not the name of the show. Well, with Tyler and Liam to my to my neck. <laughs> Just my name. Yeah. Oh. Liam's name is not allowed to be on the show unless well, Tyler's gone and then he gets crossed. This is awkward. <laughs> I was watching Oilers Nation every day with Liam and Tyler was a guest <laughs> and uh, they uh, they were saying that, you know, the, the first round pick is is a frustration. It's a source of, of you know, expectations for Henrique. And I just don't agree. I, I think that that was just the price at this acquisition or at this deadline. And that's what it is. It's not his fault. He's uh, he's come into this team and he's gonna be fine in the playoffs. Everybody just needs to calm the hell down. He's Who's been a lot better than the first round pick has been. How do you Fair know point. Thank Fair you. point. We don't know what he's doing in like probably like science class. Hey, listen, right for now. what he's doing for the Oilers right now, Henrik has been miles better. The first sixty games we got out of that first round pick, not great. Not great uh, no. Yeah, I think I, I what's think your I'd, grade? I'd go C plus. What is your grade? I just because like I agree with Liam, like needs to be a passing grade, but I don't want to go to the B range because he hasn't actually done anything overly impactful on the positive side, but the factors working against him, it's hard to get to a new team, right? Mm -hmm. but you need to allow for an adjustment period. It's very rare that a guy like, almost like Ekholm last year just jumps right in is like immediately an impact player on the team. So I'll give him a C plus cut him a little bit of slack, but would still like to start seeing a little more right away. I think you're start, you're going to start seeing more. They got off that road trip. They had some practice time. They had the one game. They have a little more practice time right now. They're Even getting off the road trip. Chance to settle in. He flew That's... directly to them on the road trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the guy's living in a duffel bag. Yeah, yeah. Now he's, guy, now like, he's he probably in the J Dub. He's, he's got like fitting? the. He the, didn't even get a tub. chance to practice before getting into his first game. Like oh. maybe what he got a morning skate. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like hey guys, I guarantee and, when he hit the ice, he was just like, I don't even know this fucking guy's name. <laughs> and in that game, he was shooting the puck. He was doing everything you could ask of him. He was four checking, whatever. I'm giving a C plus also. I'm Passing an INS insufficient. Mm, didn't you know, up. I think that's probably a fair thing because uh, he's only played four games. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been bad. So he's been fine. Yeah. I just I think that the expectations on him are probably unrealistic. He's not a play driving, flashy top six winger. He's a two way forward. Two way forward. And this team needed that. And I think, you know, maybe game by game, you might not notice the impact all that much. But I still believe that when you look back at the end of this season at what he did, you'll be like, yeah, we're happy they made that move. Especially if they re sign him. Yeah, Friedman has. According some stuff. to Elliot Friedman, the Oilers are interested in re signing both Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick. What do you think about that? I can uh, understand Henrik. I don't understand the Carrick one. Must be cheap. Well, he's going to have to be. What is Henrik right now? Five something? Five eight. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't going to work. Well, <laughs> like, <laughs> do you not have to have a bit of an understanding of what <laughs> Leon's going to want before you sign anybody else? Yeah, like, you're not going to go ahead and talk to Adam Henrik before you be like, hey, Leon, it's extension. So okay. Last chance to grab a nuggy. They're going to throw us a question. Do you think we can tag team it and answer this and be one yeah, of the first yeah, 10 people? Yeah. Once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. What's the question? How many nuggets appear in the nugget info in the nuggy infomercial? Oh like my in, god. In one picture one, two, or all three, the pictures together. I don't know. 48. That feels like a lot. No, because it's like six in order. That'll be only eight times they show it. How do I win? How gotta do I be play? one of the first to answer the question. They What's come the question? in packs of where six. Is the question? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 18. It's only three times. I don't know where the question is. It's on their most recent TikTok, the one that's not pinned. Oh my god, so many guesses. 
I really hope it's 18. A lot of people saying 24. A lot of people saying three. A lot of people th- saying six. 36. Can I just throw some? D- no, I shouldn't game the oh, system. Yeah. Just I'm gaming the system. 18. Fuck it. I want a nuggie. I want to wear it What's your every guess? day of my life. I put 36 in there. Okay. I'm guessing 48. I I have no idea what we're doing. Six piece. <laughs> I feel like if they're a six piece times six, 36, you put them up there, 36 nuggos. Yeah, is it like over the whole commercial? How many times do you see them? Well, I don't really understand the game we're playing. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. We went into this very blind, but we tried our hardest. And thank you to Wendy's. Uh, I gave okay. a real solid Just e like was the Adam Henrique. Was the question, yeah, that we are we're looking to sign both those players? Yeah. Yeah. So like Elliot Friedman. Matt, I would be concerned effect. if the Oilers traded for players that they weren't looking to re-sign at this point. I would also agree with that. Too. That's actually a really good point. <laughs> like it's no, but, really early to not want to re-sign them. No, so. but you're looking at guys as rentals, right? There's a lot of guys that That's who fair. brought in as rentals who are like, yeah. we are not re-signing. But, but, it, but, it, but even then, let's interest. have a good time. Like going time. on a date looking for a one-night stand or a serious relationship. <laughs> Doesn't mean you don't like the person. No, I saw that thing but, on Instagram where that lady got a whole bunch of dinners bought for her because she kept going on different dates. Yeah, I saw that too. So that's, that's kind of, that's kind that's of kind like, like the rental market in the That's NHL. what I'm talking about. So she wasn't sitting there with the date with the Monday guy at like appetizers going, mm, I wonder if I'm going to be with this guy on Tuesday and Wednesday because she knew already she had a different Tuesday, a different Wednesday. I tried mm-hmm. to do that move also when I was single but got no matches. <laughs> you just ended up having to pay for twice the amount of dinners. Yeah, you're I taking all these women way on dates. more dinners than I thought I would have to. It's really unfortunate. Anyways, Dan, I do understand your point though, and I that actually agree entrepreneur. with you more than I agree with Rick, despite my jackass comment. I've been doing uh, a lot of sticks and leaves. Adam Henrique has been on the ice for 50 minutes at five and five, and has not been on the ice for a goal against and two four. Excellent. Huh. As a two-way forward, I believe that is three green check marks. That looks good to me. What's He's getting out shot. Uh, just under 50 minutes at five and five and four games, two goals, four, zero against. He has been out shot 21 to 16. And like we also, also have to be I'm honest, he's handsome per 60. Very high. Yeah, he's got the look. Um, his line with Evander Kane and Brown the other day against Washington played the most at five and five. Really? I don't know all this line. Yeah, they play. It's nice when you get a blow like that, where you kind of just like ease up the minutes on people. Yeah, and the power plays really help too. Yeah, have you score adjusted four? that yet, Liam? I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, if you're not going to score adjusted, then what the <laughs> fuck are we doing here? <laughs> what we're doing here, Tyler? Trying to win a nuggy. Is well, there's that, and then there's this guy going to read something for Beta. Oh, right can now. I tell you the lines, please? Yes, yeah. just a minute. Sorry, yes, you may. <laughs> teaser. Um. So they played the 10, 10 01 together. And then <laughs> McDavid knew Hyman was 937. Fogel, Drysidle, McLeod was 818. And Yanmark, Carrick, and Perry was 658. And Yanmark, McLeod, uh, sorry, Yanmark, Carrick, and Perry uh, had the best shots for percentage at 87%. And they outshot their opponents 7 to 1 against Washington. I would have made them wait until Bag Milk read this verbatim. Yeah. And the one for- shot that went in, the one <laughs> shot I had went in. <laughs> Good night. Let me just check mark it. <laughs> so, it for a limited time only, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. That's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees in your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the promo code NATION25. Don't forget, Nation 25 gets you 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Offer valid in Canada, subject to change. Terms do apply. Sorry, goat. This cable fell. That I, thought you were just I thought you were apologizing to Tyler. No, I was, uh, I was apologizing to actual goat. Goat and little bro, specifically. They can't use my DoorDash app or promo wow. code. Because they're in Salt Lake City. Or just outside, I learned. On the Arizona Nation vacation. What are you doing over there? Was Zoom in on this, please. <laughs> This is this is riveting. If you are a podcast listener and not a viewer right now, Tyler is fiddling with his LED lights behind the TV. I don't know that this is helping the way that you think it is. Bill Hader has been cast as Cat in the Hat in the Cat in the Hat animated movie, which is a character that he played on Saturday Night Live. Oh, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt is it's playing thing one and two. He's both. Thing one oh, and two? Really? Yeah. playing both. Oh, that's like when uh, the, the weirdo creepy guy was both Winklevi in the social network. Okay. Was I he? remember what that guy or did. Or when Mike Myers both guys? was... Oh, when did they lost the rowing race? Powers. He also played Cat Bastard in the He movie. also played Cat in the Hat. Allegedly. 
Oh, yeah. Also true. There was also a trade in the NHL. Yeah, Mike they, Myers also was the star of Sorrow. I Married an Axe Murderer. It's true. Hide. Mm. Move. <laughs> Move, head. There's a good reference. There was a trade. All when? the people Today? over age yeah. 40 in our Who would be? The Carolina Hurricanes. Never heard of them. The Jets. Are trading Jameson Reese to the Ottawa Senators for a sixth round pick. The Canucks and Jets made a trade, did they? Yeah, they did. Did How they? does that work? They just got the in the playoffs. They it's the play. AHL. Can they play in the regular today. season? No. Uh, yes. Yeah, you can. You can acquire a guy and play him in the regular season for the rest of the year. So, like the Oilers could make a trade today. Yeah. And that person could play tomorrow against Colorado Avalanche in theory. Yep. Yep. Just they not just the playoffs. Can't play in the playoffs. Right. I'm confused. However, they can sign a player as a free agent, and he can play in the playoffs. Mm. Yep. College, nope. They do have college players all the time. Ooh, that might be different because then they say that because now the deadline's over, yeah. Phil Kessel can no longer. I think you're correct. Oh, maybe that's what it is. So you can sign Liam players lied. for uh, who did Liam not play lied. pro. There you go. Blame it on Lehman. Sorry. <laughs> Way to go, Lehman. Yeah. So his everyone had to see the his name tag. Lehman strikes again. Boom. <laughs> uh, this is not good. Queen would be happy with this information, Lehman. <laughs> she's very upset. R.I.P. Kate went missing. Glad she's not here to see this. Kate's fine. She's. She's coming back from surgery, people. She's waiting for you to retract that previous statement before she comes back. Okay. Liam, Liam made some phone calls. Yeah, she's she not appearing until heads. Liam stops giving her fake information on this niche order. <laughs> she stole all Yager's bobbleheads. <laughs> was that a bit? It was a bit, right? No, yeah. see, no, it turns out that wasn't. And I know why you think that, because the Pittsburgh Penguins, sorry, people who haven't listened or haven't seen anything in the last day or two, the Pittsburgh Penguins were supposed to give away bobbleheads to, of Yammer Yager to at last night's game and then they announced early in the morning that they wouldn't be doing that because the truck was stolen with all the bobbleheads in it and then what later the after in the afternoon they released a video of yager with one bobblehead in a seat next to him and said let's go find our buddies and so everybody just assumed the penguins were playing into a marketing scheme but it turns out no it is real hmm. and uh they are just they were that quick on it. They just yeah, because Yager's but I don't That's know if you noticed, clever. but Good Yager's been hanging them. around in town for like the last like three weeks in Pittsburgh. Well, you wanted to see Connor and Leon. My wife asked me, like, why is he still there? I like, thought they, that were, too. they retired his jersey like two weeks ago and he's still there, but it turns out because he was for the bobblehead. I night. like to imagine that scene from the first Fast and the Furious movie where they all come flying around the truck. Dom Toretto steals mm. all the bobbleheads. Thinking they're DVD players and cool Blu-rays, but no, <laughs> bobbleheads. Well, that's the question I floated to Colby Cohen. I know people are making this joke on Twitter too, but it's like, as the person who stole them, wh is which scenario is funnier? The idea that someone knew it was the bobbleheads and went and stole them, being like, I'm stealing these and selling them, or they just stole a truck that was heading to the rink, being like, could be like memorabilia, could be like that's anything. That's an episode like that. of The Sopranos. I yeah. don't think you take that chance. If you're going to make a, a, a robbery from a truck like that, it's coming from like a valid corporation. So these guys have done this before. They would have done their their insight. They would have known it was in that truck because it literally could have been an empty truck. Then you're putting your life on the line for an empty truck. As that guy did when he tried to shoot the thing through the window. And then the guy had the shotgun. The truck driver had the shotgun. And then he got the cable oh, and he got his arm, arm stuck. Yeah. yeah. Vince. The Paul Walker. Yeah, Vince. And then Paul Walker mm -hmm. had to come and save him. Rest mm -hmm. in peace. Exactly like that. Was it Paul or his brother? Paul. Nathan? Nathan Walker, good guy, great uh, noted Aussie oiler brother. of all time. Yeah, he's a real nice guy. Good puck to answer. <laughs> Back to who delivered for our friends at DoorDash. <laughs> Back, kind of, kind of meandered, <laughs> kind of meandered a little bit after the plug. Remember, Nation Twenty Five. Well, it sounds like who had delivered was the guy who just saved the life over there. You guys were talking about. Yep. My, I'm going first. I'm just taking it. Connor Brown delivered. Finally, he delivered, and Liam and I were together at the game. Tyler was there. Were you there? I was not. Dan, are you there? Nope. The reaction in that building. So Connor Brown delivered his goal, but the actual who delivered for me was the reaction in the building. Mm -hmm. It was wild in there. And it was a lot of fun just to kind of see it when the whole, when the Rogers place faithful realized that it was actually Connor Brown's building or a goal. You could kind of hear it, was it going building. around. It was his building. You could kind of hear the cheers going around the building in real time. It was fun. Hat started hitting the ice. <laughs> he just looked so thrilled. Standing ovation. Shout out to Connor Brown. Shout out to others fans. I'm taking two because I'm selfish. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I think he comes from I just did a hit with Low Tide where he asked me about this and it's like I think the general vibe amongst Oilers fans before he scored like 
no one hated Connor Brown, right? No. It was like you hate the bonus, you're frustrated with a lack of production, but you could see a guy putting in his max effort ever again. This wasn't a dude who like got a contract, kicked his feet up, and was like, I'm good. Like he actually still has something to play for in terms of extending his NHL career. He's been good on the PK, putting in effort. When they healthy scratched him for those games, you didn't hear like a oh like, I don't I'm playing good. Like he he understood, man, and like he's been wearing it. So I think it just came from a place of like generally we like Connor Brown. The season hasn't gone well, but you can see a guy there who chose the Oilers, wants to be like an Oiler, him, yeah. and is trying to contribute. So I think that's where it comes from because there was a moment where I was like. Are we kind of being jerks, like throwing the hats on the ice, chanting his no. name? Is it a little no, bit? No, like, I don't think dude. anyone is doing it without. Like, no, you know, it so. was it was all genuine. I, that's just that's the thing with this city: the highs and the lows, right? Like it's you look at like Twitter on dra- on on trade deadline day, and there's didn't matter what you brought in, there was always going to be people that are upset, and they're all talking like the world, so the sky is falling. And then all of a sudden, the next day, it literally could have been the next day or either that night where Connor Brown did the same thing, and everybody was so negative before is a, over the moon and positive, right? But it's. It, it were it's it you're in the you're in the fishbowl here, so you got to be careful. You know, if it, things are going bad, then you got to like keep your head on straight and try and keep your ear out of the public opinion. And then when it gets hot, sit back and enjoy it because it's going to be probably the coolest experience you go through in hockey. One of my favorite books uh, for sports fans is Jay Onright's Anchor Boy, and he talked about in that book uh, he went to an Oilers game and he kind of spoke to the because he was from Alberta, obviously. And so uh, he spoke to the fact that Oiler fans, we watch the game differently. We fan differently. And I think that he, you know, he kind of hit the nail on the head when he said, Oiler fans are like students of the game. And we watch with an anticipation of what we expect to see out of the Oilers every single shift and every single drive. And I think that we also watch the game and, and appreciate the effort and the, the workhorse ability of some guys like Connor Brown. And so, you saw it with Tobias Reader, same kind of mentality where it was just like Euler fans, while they're frustrated with his, you know, lack of ability or lack of scoring ability, whatever it is, they rally around that. And when you get out of the shit, they're right there to pull you up with it. And so, yeah, it was just awesome to see. I love this city and that screams Edmonton to me. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think in that moment too, I just felt excited for him. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the coolest spot, and I'm just assuming that's what everyone else felt too. Is like it was a cool moment, and that's a guy who had like big expectations coming into the team. And I said 65 points. You did. He scored <laughs> multiple 20 po- uh, 20 goal seasons multiple times. When he was like, lighting it up in the preseason, we had Frank on him. Frank was like, I think I'll predict 27 goals. And I was like, mm, it's gonna be good living with Connor Brown in our top six. How many games do we yeah. have left? 18. 18. Still time. He might get any three goals. Just needs an eight eight game I, I'm gonna ask you guys about that later. Dan, for our friends at DoorDash, we deliver for you. Uh, it's because you took the the two big ones off Thank the board. You. I'm going to give it to uh, Stuart Skinner. Oh, son of a for gun. For absolutely <laughs> robbing and shelving Alex Ovechkin. Right on uh, the doorstep, too, just, a handful of times. That that game could have been one of those games where Oilers fans, you know, do the old scream for a save kind of complaint. Uh, but Skinner was on his head on that third third shot of the game that he actually beat in his first save of the game. So uh, I think, Stuart like, Skinner. to your point, if that third shot had also gone in, like, that was the diving save on Ovi, I'm guessing the Bronx cheers would have started coming out. Yes. Which would have been so dumb because the first two were just bad luck. Stetcher screened him. Yeah, he did. Like, that first goal, goal was just a, like, a, a, a spinning <laughs> shot, a spinning shot that was lucky to go where it was, and is, it is what it is. And the second one was the block off Vinny, and then it just goes right to the middle. Like, what are you supposed yeah, to do? The first one screened, and also a weird angle to be expecting a shot from a righty, too. Yeah, like, not many players are going to just go and shoot that, that one. That was a shot. And that was a putting the, the puck towards the net and hope for the best, and it actually yeah. went off the post and in. So, whatever. No, it went straight in. I thought it went off the post. No, like it a, went, we were kind of sat at a, a perfect angle. It went yeah. straight through, but you could see like Stetcher was, was, was no screening ding? him. And, no, it just no, went straight in. Straight through. And and you could see Skinner maybe was leaning more towards the post to I, I, I anticipate a, a rim maybe. Probably where he'd be covering on the yeah, when you see but, Yeah, right a bit unlucky, but, I would agree, but came out and did really well, Skinner. I want to give, sorry, I just quickly want to say with Skinner, he's done this now a bunch of times this year, and it's kind of part of the reason. And then shut the door or even like give up one like against Montreal, gave up one first shift. I think he did against Philly too. And then just slams the door the rest of the game. And when people say like he sucked in the playoffs last year, 
24 year old first playoff run first year as an NHL starting goalie, like almost one of his first seasons as a professional starting goalie as well. He wasn't in Bakersfield for all that long as the legit number one. I think this year we're seeing like a very strong mentally Stuart Skinner. And I think that that's part of the reason I'm confident he'll be better in the playoffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes guys go into a fight. I mean, I know hockeyfights.com. I'm Mm -hmm. just going there, but some guys just need need to be punched in the mouth to be able to wake up and be back in the fight. And Skinner seems like that kind of a guy, man. Did he look pissed when he made that save? Like he got up like, why the fuck am I having to make these kinds of 10 bell saves early in the game? But I love it. I think he might have even been like pissed at himself. Like, yeah. really? Yeah, I just enough. stopped that after giving up what I just did. Fuck. That's Liam, fair. That's a good our friends at DoorDash who deliver for you. I'm going to give one to Evander Kane for actually getting the puck across to um And he Connor called Brown. it before yeah, the game. he did call it before the game. I thought Evander Kane was pretty effective. I think that line, like we kind of set off the top, has got a bit of work to do to gain some chemistry, but Evander Kane has to be the driver of that line. I don't think Henrik and Brown are those guys, but Kane's capable of it. And I noticed it against Columbus or Buffalo, one of those two games. He had a, he was solid. I thought creating chances, using his speed, like seemed to be more engaged in the game. So I hope this is a thing for to continue down the road here for Evander Kane because I've quite liked his game over the last four or five on that third line. Because we saw it earlier in the season, he slouched, right? It seemed like gave up is the wrong word, but like wasn't into it as much as he could but now it seems like okay like this is your role you can be the best player on this line and we need you to be it tyler for our friends at doordash who delivered for you contract year fogel coming through again a big big goal by warren fogel came at a point when they could put the nail in the coffin we'll talk about another reason why it's a big goal later on um but let me just list you some of the players warren fogel is tied he's tied for 100th in the nhl and even strength goals. Keeping it 100. Here are some of the players he is tied with this year. I won't <laughs> name them all because there's a lot. John Tavares, Alex Debrinkat, Jack Eichel, Alex Barkov, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Vincent Trocek, and Jeff Skinner. That's some good company to be tied with in terms of even strength goals. He's been really damn good this year, man. And it's starting to kind of make me wonder if you don't look at re-signing him in the summer. How? Everyone always says he's going to want a lot of money. I don't know if you're going to have to give him that much more money. The, the others will have like $8 million. Potentially more. And they don't have many players that they actually have to re-sign. So, like, Fogel would be the most expensive player they would have to re-sign. I would say him and DeHane are the two key pieces to re-sign from the actual team this season. Well, you we went through this exercise in o and and you're going to be lacking players again on the right side. Yeah. So why not bring him back? We- so in 2024-25, according to the folks at Cap Friendly, the others have Warren Fogel, Adam Henrique, Matthias Yanmark, Connor Brown, Corey Perry, Sam Carrick as UFAs up front. And on the back end, they got Troy Stetcher, Vinny, and Calvin Brickard between the pipes. Brickard, I like that. <laughs> so who is that? Uh, then again, we did this on ONE, so I don't need to go like, I don't want to go as in on it. But right now, projected 14.2 million minus the three and a half of bonuses that you're going to lose from Perry and uh, Connor Brown. That puts you at 10.7. Does anything come off that three and a half for what we have right now to eat? It? No, not right, significantly. Um, and then I'm living in a world where they're buying out Jack Campbell, which will give them 3.7 in the summer. So that's 14.4 million minus a million for the backup goalie. Let's call it two mil for Vinny. Holloway and Lavoie can probably both be on the roster next year. Let's go high and say it's 2.25. And Broberg. Pardon? And Broberg. Brober, sure. If you you need a seventh defenseman, that's a million bucks. If it's Broberg, if it's whoever, I'm just doing like a baseline thing. So with all those signings, you have two goalies, seven defensemen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have ten forwards at that point. So you will have eight point one five million to fill out the edges of your forward roster. Like again, and that'll be for three forwards at most. And is I think another layer to it is the He's market. Marsh is going to be too expensive. You're not going to get Duchesne. Joe Pavelski will probably just stay in Dallas. Tarasenko won't come here. Daniel Sprong isn't better than Fogel. Dan- David Perron, maybe. Patrick Kane won't come here. And then it's like Ocpozo, Zadina, Wheeler, Lafferty. Like your best option might be just re-sign Warren Fogel. You know what you have with him. And I think he's probably exactly. faster than the majority of those guys too. And that's what you really probably. bring to this lineup is that speed. So, so Toffoli would be someone I would look at. And again, that's 8.15 million. They could... Trade Kulak and let Broberg take his spot. They I think they do. CC if they wanted to, to, right? I think like, they do both of that. The money situation is interesting because I was the same way. Like I just sitting here the whole time, being like, ah, oh, you're not going to afford to bring back Fogel. And then 
I did the exercise and it was like, hmm, if you buy it, you got to buy out Campbell. But if you buy out Campbell, you have some room. Imagine if you get an opportunity to trade I wrote about it on him. OilersNation.com. For our friends at DoorDash, Rick, who delivered for you? But you took two, so I'm going to take two. First of all, it's the power play. Because if this thing can get going actually to what we're used to, then I, it's very, very dangerous against everybody else. But I, come on, did nobody honestly say Mr. Hattrick? Oh, yeah. Zach oh, Hyman. yeah. Zach Hyman. Oh, yeah. Zach Hyman. Kind of getting bored of watching him score TBH. Like, it's absolutely <laughs> insane where he's at right now. The funny thing was, so Zach Hyman did what Zach Hyman did. And I personally found all the hats raining down with a minute left. Hilarious. Tyler left the game, by the way. Yeah, he did. Why? How? Why? Game was over. He's it was never boy. over till double game, zeros. Game was over. The He's team, sti- the team, the team sits left. there at the very end of the game and a stick raises to the fans. The least the fans can do is applaud the stick raise. I agree. Thank Liam you. and I stayed straight through till the stars were handed out because we were hoping for the Connor Brown bump. But then it was, what was it, McDavid? Dry. Dry. Like you, I don't remember what Liam said exactly. He goes, I don't think we're going to get it. <laughs> and then Zach Hyman came out. We we're just like, ah. Time, <laughs> Liam, he would never first be time a, ever. He would never be able to sing that song to the Liverpool team. To what? The, the fans. They all sing, you'll oh, never, ne- walk, never alone. walk alone. So you can't sing that to your, the Oilers. I'm Why, blown yeah. away. I'm very surprised. Why? There was two and a half minutes left. You left with that much time left. Mm. It's when the hats were coming down. And were you were afraid up, to get one in the eye? They were up 7-2. And I was like... I'm afraid to ask this question. So you left after the hat throw. Yeah. Did you? No, you know he didn't. You left early. You left at the hat throw. You know he didn't. And you didn't throw your hat. No, I like my hats. Oh, my Lord. Unbelievable. I didn't wear one, to be fair. <laughs> I was wearing a hat either. Like, too. <laughs> were you guys surprised that Connor Brown wasn't uh, like one of the three I thought for them? sure they were going to give it to him. Like, I just thought he was going to get one. I, oh, and sure. yeah, as soon as Hyman didn't come out as a second star, <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, what you said. But I was like, <laughs> okay, this is it. So I have a theory, though. I think that I'm pretty sure it was Sportsnet. I was trying to look it up. I quickly. think it is Sportsnet. I think it, Sportsnet it might have did. also been TMZ because it was a TNZ broadcast. Okay, because oh, not because TMZ. TMZ? <laughs> TMZ is pivoting hard. Yeah, <laughs> because Good for because them. I have a theory. I Sportsnet did the three stars for the six to five uh, Oilers Bruins loss in overtime. And Sportsnet named all three Oilers as the three stars in that game. Mm. And I saw some uproar from the Boston media. And I wonder if Sportsnet maybe got like a hand wrapping from the NHL and was like, no. you guys need to pick some three no. stars. No. Have you heard answers. the guy? Have you heard Boston's announcer? Yes. But he doesn't. He's Ness. There's a reason Nesson doesn't pick the three stars. Well, if the NHL is going to slap the hand of the Oilers for that, then they're. I don't even know how far they have to go to the Bruins to deal with Jack Edwards. Agreed. Then. Agreed. But I, I'm just saying that Sportsnet. Yeah. Mysteriously leaves Connor Brown out of a three stars after they did that with the uh, other the, so. the NHL.com ones were the same, so I think it would have been standard. I would have gone. I think my three stars for that game would have been Connor Brown, Connor Brown, Connor Brown. That's three stars, know. honestly, at the end of the day, doesn't really mean that much. No, it doesn't. So it just, really give, all, points, so just give all three to him. Have some fun with it. Give all three to him. Give all three to him. Let the fans cheer. Like whatever. Move I on. get. I, I get. I skinner. only get tickets to the first game of every month because I want to see the Molson <laughs> Cup presentation. Yeah, my favorite the part about delay. those presentations is going. every time Connor wins them and they take the picture and he goes. And you just know that the he rep just has that look on his face, yeah. like "oh fuck." You feel for the rep that got chosen was like, yeah. "I can't wait, I can't <laughs> wait," and then it's just <laughs> anger. I would have just, gone Skinner, Hyman, Brown. That would have been my three stars. I think Skinner was. Yeah, huge. I I would agree with a Skinner pick yeah, there for the nine twenty-six after giving up goals on the first two. Sometimes yeah. it does need to be pure vibes. Has to be vibes. Has to be because the and vibes in there were excellent. Amazing. I I said it on the other show. I was at McDavid's sixtieth goal game. Yep. And I think that one was the brown goal was way better. And the granted in terms like, of reaction from the crowd. Yeah, like McDavid's was an overtime winner, so maybe it didn't get the longevity and stuff like that. And he was still incredible moment, don't get me wrong, which is I don't know. Everything around like you it felt like he had just scored like the it Stanley Cup like winner. He or scored his like 50th. Yeah. It would be really hilarious. Like the standing ovation was incredible. It was crazy. And it just didn't stop. 
it would be hilarious to show this out of context to other people and be like, yeah, we got, we got a guy that got to 60 <laughs> goals and scored an overtime goal. And it's way less or way more subdued than Connor Brown's goal. And who what, scores the, the two games. Yeah. The, 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 I think it was the seventh goal, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah seventh, it was. seventh goal <laughs> and a seven to two win. Plus like five when goal. Hat started coming down for Connor Brown's goal. Like there was only a handful, probably like four or five or whatever. I was laughing. Just hilarious moment. McDavid sixtieth was also on a Wednesday. Saying, I don't know that I've on. ever been to a game that fun in terms of just the overall vibe in the building in mid March ever. Remember when he scored that hat trick when there was nobody in there, and then the three people that were allowed in there had like four hats to each to throw. <laughs> that, pissed so, down, like, yeah. that pissed them off so much. I still think about that uh, the Bud Light Celtic just sitting there by himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that bubble hockey was. Uh, quite a fun Something else. time, yeah. Even like the basketball. There was, dude, there was, was a cool. Bruins Hurricanes game at nine in the morning. That's right. Yeah, and they I, couldn't play the night before. Oh something, yeah, something, something. something. They had to move to the next day, and something. I think something. it was the seven o seven o two. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. We just, I just had nine in the morning hockey. It was great. I just had memories come up on Facebook of the high five line that happened oh, the, just before the world oh, yeah, shut down because I was probably was four years ago now. some people say that started it was, it was i mean it very well could have it was tuesday's episode was was actually the uh the, the four year anniversary yeah. yeah yeah the four year anniversary i remember sitting down. at a bps with my buddies and the oilers were about to have band air pizza bread probably i love cool. pizza bread. oilers game was in the se- first or second intermission and i remember turning to my buddies being like whoa like it sounds like the nhl might shut down right away i was like this might be the last period of oilers hockey we get for like two weeks yeah <laughs> We had the Germans. Two weeks. We had the Germans booked in for that Jets game. I remember game. I was in Phoenix the week before, and my friend Greg and I just watched all the Oilers games while we were there. And his mom said, "He's like, you guys can just do this at home, you know." And we joked. It was like, "No, we can't. What if something happens?" And then like it was just gone. <laughs> <laughs> like, Whoa. It's Liam's fault. <laughs> it's Liam's fault. No, Rudy really go bad did it. Yeah, we Maybe we'll share really that video of the high five line again because I got it on my Twitter somewhere. Yeah, you got to share that. That's that was fun. And then I go Back chasing the, the uh, drum line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did. I, that's the one thing that the only thing you I also enjoyed. Spilled a lot of mustard on your Yamamoto drink. I did, I did, but I got out. That was mm-hmm. Calgary, though. I remember it one. But no, I liked the only thing I liked about being in Vegas for that spot there, where we like wouldn't get there in time to have a good angle, is that being so close to like their drum line and the, mm-hmm. all their cheering stuff. Then. You did love yelling at them. Yeah, yeah. I don't have much of a voice yeah. by the time the game is over, but nope. it's one thing that's fun. Yeah. They do not enjoy it as much as I do. Nope. No, no, they don't. <laughs> I ate a lot of hot dogs in there. That's they what were I free. Know. They were free. You know? Gotta love a all-inclusive flight deck. Glizzies. A Timo. Yeah, all-inclusive glizzies. <laughs> and and boat sliders. Oh, delightful. Delightful. I would like to talk about some betting. Me too. If you don't, I mind. would also like to. How many points are taken for Connor on Saturday? Three. Ooh. Oh, I would love it. Mm. For our friends at Bet99, the number one online gaming experience in Canada, built by Canadians for Canadians, elevate your experience at Bet99. Provided that you are 19 plus, can play responsibly, and you are not a person in Ontario. If you are, too bad. Should leave. I want to mm-hmm. talk about what <laughs> Liam, Tyler, and I did. On Wednesday night, all three of us were going to the game, so we decided squad bet. Win to get? We didn't do a win to get, but we each picked a leg of a parlay, mm-hmm. and it was juicy. Although Tyler <laughs> yeah. didn't include us in his extra leg, did a little bet boost on himself. Yeah, a little bet booster. <laughs> did, didn't include the boys in it. Well, so everyone picked a leg, and so we did that. And then I was sitting Liam there. went well, Fogel goal. Wow. I had. Well, there's puck line, and I don't, you had Hyman shots. Hyman shots. Which hit like two minutes into the game. Yeah. And then <laughs> when I'm sitting there throwing it all together, I was basically looking and went like, McDavid, two points? That's a layup if this is all going to hit. So I just threw that in there too. Juiced her up. <laughs> didn't tell the boys though. Yeah, that's a bad move. Left, that one left the game guess. early, didn't left throw his hat. Early, Good Lord. Took Not a hat a... home, didn't include the boys in the boosted parlay. Not a great night. For... I got a couple of futures for you from our friends at Bet99, gentlemen. I would like your opinion. I want to start with Western Conference winners. Western Conference winner. So we're talking about a little bit of ploffs. Oilers, currently the favorites at plus 315, followed by Colorado at plus 380, followed by Dallas at plus 500, followed by Vancouver at plus 510, followed by Vegas at plus 540. That is your top five favorites for the Western Conference winner. 
how we feel. This is like to come out of the West and win the cup. Or yeah, the cup. Go, to the cup final. go to the cup. Go to the cup final. I, I would put my money on Vegas. I wouldn't. I think they're going to miss the They playoffs. couldn't get past Calgary. I know, but just value wise, pure value wise, I'm, I would just I think, put it on. I just think, I do uh, think Vegas it's so tight, such a coin flip. And listen, I started my show the other day wearing a Vegas Golden Knights jersey, which was the worst thing he's ever done on that show. Why would you do that? Why, <laughs> why do you have why, one? Why do you own one of those? Uh, <laughs> so hold on a man. second here. So now we're going gonna to put this together. Recap it. Hold on. So. So you didn't watch the whole game. Nope. You didn't throw your hat. Nope. The next day you wore the jersey of the team that knocked your team out the previous year in the playoffs. And Not there was the one next. other one in there for up. Not to. the next day. And you didn't include the boys in the day. parlay. Oh, yeah, and, the, and, the, and you took the boys in the parlay. So people were giving me shit on Owen every day because they said I was hyping up Vegas too much. And they're like, oh, that's your favorite team, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. We all and know you're a Columbus fan. That the summer the Oilers got James Neal, I was walking around a flea market. And I saw a James Neal Golden Knights jersey. And I was going to a party that night. And the jersey was like 40 bucks. I was like, it'll be so funny. It was like a week after they got Neal. I'm like, it'd be so funny if I showed up to a party tonight rocking a James Neal jersey. So I just paid the 40 bucks and got it because I thought it was a funny bit. I don't and think it's funny at all. No one's laughing. What he's, meaning to say, what he meaning, he's meaning to say is he got it on opening night of the NHL season yeah. with the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, so yeah, I just had it, and then I was like, ah, oh, everyone on Tuesday was giving me shipping, like, oh, the Golden Knights are your favorite team. Oh, so I was like, I got all the weird stuff. I, 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 I Oilers a- Nation every day with Liam Harbin. Yes, and weekdays, renowned Vegas fan Tyler in a and that Vegas other guy, the other self, uh, Tyler McSelfish over here. I heard all he really wants to do is start their horn thing. Yeah, you want to be with Lil John. <laughs> that would be fun. Tyler, what this tells me, though, is that you're not a fan of my content from before you worked here because I wore a Golden Knights hat on a show. We gave and you Jay shit. Jay just about fucking killed me. Yeah, Jay we gave you shit almost forever. came across the table at me. It was bad. There was even a bet to light it on fire. Yes, there was. That and that disappeared. <laughs> it's not on fire anymore. Back to the some odds for our oh, friends at Bet99. Can I say why Vegas aren't the best for that pick, like Dan said? Sure. You can just look at their record. And that Edmonton are <laughs> that. Okay, really so it's likely. To. <laughs> Vancouver Last night's highlights. Vancouver Vegas could be a legit first round matchup. Mm-hmm. So there's a pretty good chance one of them gets knocked out there. What? Colorado Dallas. You miss one of those two. Edmonton's gonna play LA. So you have a better chance of Edmonton moving forward than any of the previous four. But Probably why they're the favorite. That's exactly that would be my reasoning there. Is that, yes. And because we're the best. The best. True. Can't argue with that. So there you go, folks. We're the best. going to win the division. That's Of those top five, name a better uni. Can't. (laughs) Eastern Conference winners. Ready, Liam? Mm. Favorites out of the East. Florida, plus 300. Carolina, plus 425. New York Rangers, also plus 425. The Bruins, plus 540. And rounding of the top five, Toronto, plus 790. Toronto. What are the Canes again? Or 25, along with the Rangers. Toronto, lol. I kind of like the Canes. Canes in there at 425. Anybody else? I just, I don't, I like them in the regular season. I don't think you're a playoff team. But now so they've I, got my money is, I know, but Gensel's great to be the 1B to somebody, right? Like, and I don't know if he can carry it. I still don't think they have that top end talent they didn't have previous years. I, kind of I would agree. have to put my money on, I'd have to put my money on, on Florida. I would too. I think Florida. And the Rangers. Uh, yeah, the Rangers scared me a little bit. If you watch that I game last Rangers. night, Tampa Bay was able to come back on them. I think Rangers would be my number one. I think Carolina's goaltending is going to be iffy as well. Like Freddie Anderson's a bit inconsistent, and he's always hurt. So that's one thing. The Bruins' blue line isn't as good as it's been in previous years. And the Leaves are the Leaves. These are the facts. The Bruins Next are up. winning. Tampa Bay plus 1,200. Come That's out of the east. I like. mm, yeah. Next up. Currently, hang on, I gotta change my standings here. Currently, the Detroit Red Wings are one point back of a wild card spot. Mm-hmm. East. My next question for our friends at Bet99. Do the Detroit Red Wings make the playoffs? No is minus 150. Yes is plus 125. I'm gonna say no. It's a, it is no a for Tyler. struggle to try and make the playoffs. In that side right now, it just seems like every team is falling out of the race. Yeah, are you know? Dead. I, I, I'm not gonna say no. I'm gonna say a maybe. Because <laughs> what are the odds on maybe? <laughs> <laughs> the odds on maybe are. Uh, let me I see. throw down a couple bucks Minus just because. 10. I throw down a couple bucks on that just because I think that there's teams that are still falling out of the race. The Philadelphia Flyers are still an absolute question mark as to what they're gonna do. So yeah, I would say yes, they're still in the mix. It's, 
is New York not in the mix there still? The Islanders? So the yeah, standings but- are right now. Tampa Bay holds the first wild card spot with 76 points, and the Islanders got in with 72. Yep. They're tied with the Red Wings, who have 66 games played with 72, and then Washington has 71. The Buffalo Sabres are now quietly only three games out of a playoff spot, two you games in up. hand now. And um, the Devils, if they can get some Devils have 68, Penguins have 67, and that's kind of so, like the race is pretty tight. The to be problem fair. if you're the Devils or Penguins, like I think it's easy to sit there and look if you're yeah, the Devils. Teams. Yeah, you're four back of the Islanders. Okay, that's Not doable. Bad. Penguins, you're five back of the Islanders. That's doable. But then the issue is there's so many head to head games still between all these teams yeah. that like it just becomes a math problem of like closing a five point gap in 15, 16 games when all those teams in front are playing each other. There's going to be some three point games. Well, here you go. The very Red... tough to do unless you're called the Edmonton Oilers. The, the Red Wings next six games: Buffalo at home, the Penguins on the road, Columbus, then the Islanders, Nashville, and then Washington. Four so the four of the no next hit. six are against five of those teams. Four of those teams. Finally, for our friends at Bet Nine Nine, I feel like this is a lock, but I'm curious. I put a bunch of money on it. I wonder if you join me, Tyler. Calgary Flames missed the playoffs minus five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those people you see posting their bets. So they're like, just got to see one go through the hoop. And it's like $5 to win $5 and three cents. And it's like, yeah, you just sometimes you need a win. So, yes. If I was on a breakaway, I wouldn't pass up an empty netter. So I'm in, you know, uh, the house. Can I throw you guys a sure. 99 themed question? If you were the sports book and you were tasked with setting an over under for how many goals Connor Brown will score from now to the end of the year. What's the number you'd set it at? What's the most intriguing possible line? <laughs> Stop looking at my ass the idiots questions, Tyler. Ah, shit. No, yeah, never mind. Never mind. I didn't ask it. I didn't ask it. <laughs> okay. We just did it on real life, so I thought we could do it again today. Camera just paused. Time for Ask the Idiots, boys. I got three questions for you. Uh, courtesy of our friends at Snow Valley Aerial Park in the Rainbow Valley Campground. Opening on May 31st is the Snow Valley Aerial Park. Family fun all summer long. Attractions include the Aerial Tower, White Mud. Or, White Mud Creek Mining Company, Target Golf, and an all-new mini golf. I personally most excited about the Target Golf. Was I think that, that sounds fun. I Was think the new family built that. They did all those years ago. Mm-hmm. If you do the Target Golf, then into the mini golf, hey. make a nice little afternoon. Oh, of that's it. a great little afternoon. Also, if you want to do a little camping this summer, the Rainbow Valley Campground this summer, take advantage of over sixty sites and three comfort camping domes right here in the city. Edmonton's only campground. Man. Visit rainbow-valley.com to book your spot. Let's do a little camping. Let's do it. I just bought myself a fresh tent last year. Maybe I'll just settle in. Live there. Why not? Spend the I summer there. Yeah. Okay. Spend the summer there. That'd be fun. Ask the idiots, gentlemen. I've got three questions for you. Tyler's already been having a sneak peek on my questions. <laughs> to be fair, I actually would have no way of knowing that. Rascal. I think you guys share an email. Yeah. Tyler, is- Tyler's just sending you emails himself from aliases. Probably burner emails. Mm, this way he's on Dan, top of the answers. Dan, coming down to you. First question that Tyler stole. What was everyone's? Well, that's a two-parter. What was everyone's reaction to Connor Brown scoring his first goal of the season? How many does he finish with? I thought it was a terrible moment. Didn't even like it one bit. Yep. Mm. I would set the line at two and a half goals. So the rest over of under? the year, the rest of the season, yeah. Okay. So, will you take an over or under? I would take the under on that. How dare you, Liam? Thoughts on what was your reaction to Connor Brown's goal and how many is he finished with? I thought it was epic and I'm glad that headline is now over. I will take the line at one and a half. I would not be shocked if he did not score again the rest of the season. How fucking dare you. <laughs> Tyler? My reaction was holy shit. And I would set the line at three and a half. I actually think he'll go on a bit of a run. You were clearly pretty excited because you never filmed that games and you no. filmed the video. Yeah, I did. I really thought it'd be good content. I was like, oh, I should get this and send it to Waz. He can put it up on the account. And then he He said he just posted a video of me missing the football game. Glad he he was still there for that. (laughs) Connor Brown all season. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I I was very fired up. Rick, what was your reaction to Brown's goal and how many is he finished with? I got a good laugh out of it. And I would put I think I put the number at four and a half just because I think he does go on a bit of a run here. And I'm going to say he gets the over. You're betting the over at four and a half. Four. He Juicy scored odd. with his skate. He didn't score with his stick. I've never been one to complain about how a player scores. <laughs> I, I, like he's one put a bunch off, off is extremely harsh on my point. Yeah, he's I put a bunch off the look. post off his stick. Yep. Uh, he's he's going to find a couple now. I legitimately, couple. Okay, so my reaction was I loved it. Uh, Liam and I did a healthy cheer, I feel yeah, like. A lot great. of fist pumping. We were high-fiving. 
I say he gets four more by the end of the season. Are you gonna take I, over yeah. four and a half? I, I like think it's gonna be one of those things where it's like he got his first one, the relief was visible. Yeah, he's getting an empty netter here soon. And now he's gonna feel good about his game and some of those posts he's been hitting, they're gonna start going in for him. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say he's getting four more, he's gonna finish with five. My actual reaction was just to send you guys a message that said no fucking way. Oh, that yeah, is, did that did that. happen. That That's was all the, I said. Oh, in our group chat. Reversing the order. Uh, Rick, you're up first. Is anyone else disappointed that Adam Henrique has been so quiet through his first four games? No, because we said we just talked about this. He moved. He went directly to the arena, right into the dressing room, put his new equipment on. Um, he hasn't been. He's now getting situated in his hotel room. Like maybe he's got a yeah. He's got a, maybe an apartment. I don't know what he's dealing with, but no, he has not been bad off uh, defensively. You haven't seen very much offensively, but he's got, um, give him some time, find some chemistry. Uh, yes, you probably heard the segment before. Tyler, how are you disappointed? <laughs> so the two questions I brought to the show for prep today were both directly from Ask the Idiots. That's right. There's um, something in like there. You sent them in. But yeah, again, I'm willing to cut them some slack. If we're this concerned or we we keep seeing this level of play and we're two games away from the playoffs, I'll be a little bit like, er, what are we getting in this guy? But for now, I'm fine. Liam? I'm, I'm content with what he's done. So far, I think he's been fine. Like we said, no goals have gone in the back of the net when he's been on the ice. So that is a positive for me. Dan, my disappointed con- Adam Hardrick. My concern is at 11, he needs to shave his sideburns. Yep. You know what? I'll just tell ta- I'll, I'll tell Dan on that one. Shave those sideburns. Can't because the sideburns are connected to the beard. And now we are almost in playoff beard season. Let them go, boys. That's true. I got to start growing. Finally arguably the most Please important don't. question. <laughs> Tyler's been growing that one since last year, actually. <laughs> I shaved this morning. No, yesterday morning. <laughs> okay, two weeks ago. <laughs> Jumping in the middle, Liam, you're up first. This one comes in from Greg. And actually, Greg with two Gs. He's hogging all the Gs. Slurpee season is almost here, oh, and baby. I need to know the goat flavor or goat flavor combo. See, I'm just a one flavor man now. And I go Dr. Pepper Cherry is my that is my is good so flavor. specific though. I well they do it. We're asking for the, the goat the, flavor. The store that's by fair. me is always there. That's so fair. I that's what I that's what I go with. Tyler, goat flavor. flavor, Slurpee flavor, or flavor combo. I am a fan of just going straight cola. That is very good. But if it's a hot summer day and I'm looking for something extra refreshing, I am going with a layered approach, mm. rotating between like Sprite or Seven Up. And something like peach. Seven up, uh, oh, seven up peach, is seven really up peach, good. Seven up peach and just hit them back and forth. Rick, what is the goat flavor? Goat flavor combo. Your choice of cola, Pepsi, Coke, your, whichever way. Mm-hmm. And if you want to start getting crazy, then you go Pepsi or Coke. Then you go the the white, whether it be seven up or Sprite, and then top it again. If you want to go crazy, crazy, you go Pepsi, Sprite, lime, Pepsi on top. Oh wow! Ooh, so then it's like a Long Island iced tea. Oh wow! Rick knows how to make a cocktail. Get me summer slurpy horny. Nation Dan, goat <laughs> flavor or goat flavor combo? I just I'm I'm surprised that everybody's kind of on board with this. I'm the cola guy all the way through. It doesn't have to be Pepsi or Coke. It doesn't matter. Just the darker brown, the better. Uh, and then I splash in a little bit of the Long Island iced tea mix myself. My always my rule is if any of you went to go get slurpees and they go, hey bag milk, you want a slurpee? Yes. What flavor do you want? I would always say anything brown. Mm -hmm. Mm. But to answer the question specifically, my absolute favorite is it's refreshing. I want a little bit of Sprite or 7-Up, whatever you got. And then some of the lime Slurpee. It's just refreshing. It is. Feels really nice. Nice and light. My goat flavor, though, is banana. However, I I forgot about Sprite. I will admit that that is a top flavor. Well done, Tyler. Thanks. L dog. I will. So go, I will take. <laughs> I will me. die on this hill. Oh, and it is Slurpee, and nothing else. You don't like Frosters. Don't like Frosters. Don't yeah, like anybody else. You. you have to go to Seven Eleven for a Slurpee. None of them must taste right. They don't taste as good. If you do lime with layers of vanilla ice cream, it's that is not a Slurpee. That's a screamer. <laughs> That is different. Mm-hmm. Also, dad. you know what? That's I'm just gonna put this out there, and it might be controversial. Get your fucking crystal light flavors out of here. Yeah, I'm with you. What are we doing? Nobody wants <laughs> those. What are we doing? I've it's never a wasted once. slot. 100%. Nobody wants them. There is nothing worse than going to a 7 Eleven, maybe it's really even a Circle K, and you get there and all the flavors suck. Yep. It's like 
Mountain Dew grapefruit or some random ass <laughs> flavor like that. <laughs> Terrible. Crystal Light. Oh, they Garbage. do. See, these oh, kids, kids horrible. these days don't even know about the old swamp water option that they used to do, <laughs> where they would put just all of the bags into one <laughs> thing, <laughs> and that was that was the that was the slush you got. Did you say water. ooh? Too many slurpees. But everyone does that. You do yeah, that. No, right? Oh, the camera water. froze again. Oh. This is not oh, good. It's... I'm gonna put up a picture of Nobby while we fix, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's our new technical difficulties. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll be right back. <laughs> Always back. What segment are we on? I see it. I see it. It's just wrapping up. Yep. Uh, before we wrap up the podcast with Hot and Cold Performers, <laughs> I just got one more question for you. Played his first game on Wednesday night. Just first thoughts of Troy Stetcher. Don't take penalties, but also whatever. He was fine. In my he, opinion, he was fine. Bad penalties. The tripping calls. You get your stick in there. Going to get called every time. Great interview yeah. with Gene Principe, though, the day before. Felt uh, felt like I got to know the guy a little bit better, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I didn't love his game at all. I actually despised it, but I'm willing to come. <laughs> oh, would you know? You weren't even there for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know I left before he took his last penalty. Uh, but I'm willing. Again, it's so hard to come into a lineup like that. So I still think he's going to be a good. Athlete. And when was his last game? Yeah, a month ago. Yeah, give the guy a break. Yeah, yeah I, break. I'm not too worried about him. I he is he had the worst first game out of the three. Yeah, but that's fair. he's also our seventh defenseman, so I think that's fair. All right, boys, let's wrap up the podcast with some hot and cold performers. This week, we are talking about the Robin Brownlee Memorial Auction up at nationgear.ca. It's been a couple of months since we lost our boy, and now we're trying to do a little uh, a little good, raising some money for his family, trying to help, uh, help out with some of those bills that are going on. So currently, we've got the auction for an experience at Sports 1440. <laughs> Mm -hmm. pop on over to the studio spend the day with the sports 1440 crew tour the studio meet everybody including jason gregor kevin carries from the big program mm -hmm. watch those shows live in studio and then our friends at sports 1440 are going to send you to the game on march 21st fun currently the bid is at 400 bucks those tickets are probably worth more than that yeah i think another layer to this which hasn't been said is they also got in guest in person guests too. Yep. So you won't just be seeing like Gregor and Karius and Low Tide, like maybe someone else, maybe maybe Laddie Schmidt's there. Maddie Schmidt's there. Maybe if you're a football fan, Eddie Steele shows up for the big program. I'd like to just stare at Gregor, please. And I'd like him to wear his lime glasses. And his hut up. Hoodie Gregor, I love it. Oh, I love Hoodie <laughs> Gregor because he looks show. like the Kermit meme. <laughs> 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 Nationgear.ca. We got uh, only a couple hours left on this one, so we probably missed it. <laughs> probably but we're doing another one next week that is the same thing but a tour of our office Whoa. Fun. we like have seven minutes we have fun. no in-person guests you we're can... even saving the last pilsner from the jasper pond doggy <laughs> tournament in the fridge for you you can have the last <laughs> two duck. bailey's chocolates that are that there pop well. out there on that there's table. also some pop from a, a watch party we did before christmas Real flat <laughs> otherwise good flavors fine <laughs> actually if we did like a like a box of just all the stuff laying around the office and told whoever won the auction, you can pick three things from the box. Fun. That, that would drive up the bidding. Hell all yeah. it is is Bailey's chocolates, flat Pepsi, the random God. coffee. No, we got extra light stands <laughs> and, and a, some bag of chips from America. All the nation yeah. gear we legally can't sell anymore for copyright reasons. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Do you know what? If you win nice the price. auction, come clean our office. That's what you get. If you, you win the auction, money. spring cleaning, <laughs> you can take the garbage out. Yeah. Take it with you if you want. That's I'll, fun. I'll take you to bread and butter. Well, come on. <laughs> I'll take you to bread and butter so you can buy me a pizza roll. <laughs> Everybody's having a good time with that. Nationgear.ca. Also, selfishly, new Better Late Than Never hoodies are up under the shows tab. Wore mine yesterday. Felt very, very good. Very, very handsome. As we do every week, we start off with our veggies, gentlemen. We are going to do cold performers first. Nation Dan, down at the end of the line, you are up first. Your cold performer of the week for uh, nationgear.ca. My cold performer of the week is just going to go to the Oilers for their playoff ticket mm -hmm. price increase. Oh, I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. You don't want to. It's, it's about awful. it's about thirty percent across the board. Uh, pretty gross oh, for for a guy that like I used to have season tickets. <laughs> I used to have quarter season seats. It was a confirmation to me that I made the right decision to walk away and I won't be coming back. So Oilers for your playoff season ticket uh, price increases. You get my cold performer of the week. I also drink a beer at Rogers Place and I get crazy. I used to. 
Uh, unrelated but related. Subscribe to my Feet Finder. Mm. Mm. May have some bills coming. Hey, and if you have an empty seat come playoff time, I'm always ready to fill. There you go. Take Dan to a game with him. <laughs> Liam, you're up next. Your cold form of the week for our friends at nationgear.ca. Last night, I went to the IMAX theater for the first time. I, I saw watched, Yoda. Yeah, I watched Dune 2. The mm. movie was great. Did you get seats. one of the sexy popcorn bowls? No, I didn't get one. They didn't have any. <laughs> was that your first IMAX film of all time? I've never been to an IMAX theater before. Wow. They don't really have one close to Shore Park, so I'd never really go. That's fair. My <laughs> friends really wanted to see this movie in IMAX. <laughs> and the seat in there, atrocious. The worst seat I've ever seen at a movie theater before. Mm. Incredibly uncomfortable. Have you been then? At not West to, Ed? Not to that specific. Oh, thing, no. don't go. Do not go to West Ed IMAX. It was brutal. <laughs> Aggressive. No, don't. If you want to have a good time, Respect. make your own theater. Next week, they're an advertiser on the show. <laughs> yeah, we want to welcome Wem back to the show. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> Tyler Ramchuk getting hydrated while we await his answer for NationGear.ca, your cold promo of the week, Tyler. Uh, Johnny Lazarus. <laughs> he is uh, a member of our company, works for Daily Faceoff, does morning cup of hockey. He posted that his go-to way to eat pasta is with plain pasta noodles with butter and ketchup. What the fuck? Fire him. It's terrible to look at. Look at this. That's ridiculous. That is awful. And he's being dead serious. Um, so How old is he? He's fired unless David Quadrelli doesn't kill him first. Uh, he's 25. You're old enough to know better. That's, yep. Yeah, that's... that's like, hey, Johnny, is- figure it out. That is something I would have eaten when I was like 13 years old because I couldn't figure it out. You still would have known to grab the pasta sauce. So, yeah, yeah. What I said With on ketchup? Owen every day was the Nasty. only time that's okay as a meal is if there's been some sort of apocalypse, you're the last one in the city, mm. and you're also seven years old. No, you still don't put ketchup on there. I would butter rather just no- eat it noodles butter and noodles. butter is not the worst thing in the world. That's fair, too. Yeah. Fry it up a little bit, a nice little texture on the noodle. But also, look at how clumpy his butter is. He, yeah. just he didn't lump. melt it. He just he threw, didn't melt it. He didn't even just clumps of butter in oh, chunks. Man, that is awful. Oh, no, God. God. That's... No, God, please, no, no. Gen Z. No, no. Is he a Gen Z? What does that make him? Twenty-five millennial Gen Z, Gen Y. What the? Yeah, we're heading towards. No, it's not a millennial. We're not claiming that shit. We don't take that. We're not claiming him. Gen Z. (sighs) Brutal. Terrible man. Rick, you're up next. You can do another one for Johnny Lazarus if you want, but you're up for Nation Gear. Dotsier, cold promo of the week. Yeah, well, he's gonna get part of it for sure because that's (laughs) that's ridiculous. That's awful. I don't know who. I don't know who watches a bit of the AHL though, and I. Joseph Duzak. Oh, yeah, the Kyle Clifford thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the yeah. Kyle Clifford thing, this kid scores a goal, then he goes celebrates in front of the Marley's bench. Obviously, you know they're going to get pissed off. Mm-hmm. No problem with you doing that. Celebrate. This goes back to the Morgan Riley and whatever else, whoever the Ottawa player was. Celebrate all great. you want. Kyle Clifford said, hey, no, you don't. Got on the ice, went to grab this kid. Instead of, like, standing up for himself, even holding on for dear life, he drops faster and curls quicker than Matthew Kachuk could ever do. Mm-hmm. And then he just lays there. Finally, they pulled Clifford off, who's pissed, put him in the box. This kid gets up, and once he, like, wipes the shit off his ass because he just dumped himself, mm-hmm. he has this shit-eating grin on his face. And so the backstory there, he's a former Marley, and there was kind of a story of him, like, quitting on the team last year, and he was a problem in the room. So Yeah, like, hmm. linesman, let Kyle Clifford do his thing. This kid needs to learn. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I just, it's, yeah, it's a, like, Rose Hill touched on it, like, two weeks ago. Like, it is a thing in this league and in You brought it right up now. last week with yeah. the guy who who, who flopped Bastion on the ice and, along yeah. the boards and then got up. Yeah, Bastion. And Cousins devil. has done it a bunch of times where he yeah. drops in front of the crease and shoots back up. Yeah, it's it's creeping into the game where it's, like, a, it's starting to become one of those things that I can't imagine as an active player even being able to trust your eyes when you see the other guy's reactions to things now because they're crumpling onto the ice and waiting for someone to come and help them. And it's it's just, I don't know. It's got to be tough. I mean, that's just this whole generation, isn't it? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I won't say the whole generation, but I won't say the whole one. I did, I'm still there's a lot the of them out there. Don't worry. Damn I'm kids. looking directly at you two. I'm second youngest here. He's a, he's a, I'm, 
One of you guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> we need more accountability buddies in this world. It's the opposite of the how do you do, fellow kids? Leave us pulling up. Like, how do you do, fellow Adults. millennials? <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. So the idea I had for cold performers this week was the guy who came up to Liam and I who was talking about just going into empty seats. It was just a weird <laughs> interaction at the game the other night. And I was going to do that. But I'm going back to Johnny Lazarus's past because I'm grossed out by what I just saw. That was terrible. They are just fucking ass right now. That is ass. You know what I mean? Also, um, just so that guy's name is Joseph Duzak, that Rick said. Yes. Uh, Kyle Clifford only has three less points than him this season. And he has more goals than that guy. So yeah, it's not like this guy, the way he acted was ridiculous. I don't know how a teammate you stand up for a guy like that. He also went to Minsk Dynamo for a year before after he left oh, the Mollies. Not gonna last with the rest from Minsk to hey, did we I, find out by the way who won the Capitals game on Twitter or oh, Instagram? I can look. Yeah, have a little look see while we're doing some. The what game? Oh the, yes, the Capitals the game. The three V three. Oh that one. I was like, game. oh, we beat them. Did yeah, you win like, a nugget? Hey, Milk, were you not there as well? Like Tyler left, but <laughs> were you not there? No, I always ride it out to the end. Yeah. No, I want the uh, the capital letter game. Let me have a peek. Yeah. Yeah, we won't have a look. Right. Check the results live. Liam is checking for the results on that. We're going to continue on with hot and cold performers. Rick, we're reversing the order for nationgear.ca, your hot performer of the week. I'm going to go back to Detroit. Earlier this week, they had a little uh, in practice fight, <coughs> and these two guys went at it. And last night on the ice, One's in a scrum. What happens? The other one comes flying in to take the guy on his back. Well, Next thing you know, they're sitting in the in the, in the penalty box together. <laughs> that right there is hockey. The big guy is smoking hot. By all indications, Liam is saying I'm the winner. By Easy all- peasy. Five votes for me, two for BM, one for Dan, nothing for Rick Tyler. It's all good. I have a straight build. dubs. <laughs> a build. Oh, I don't know who is voting. That was terrible voting. They, they're one of them for me. Bangkok is hilarious for one. Moscow sounds like a hell of a time. Prague sounds like a great time. Uh, apparently not. No, literally nobody said your name. So, <laughs> How, <does that> make <laughs> you feel right? How many voters? Um, there was sounds like eight. Thirteen eight comments. Oh. Okay, I'll take one vote away because I voted for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but then Jay Dadrama thirteen said Liam's win. Because you could drink the most there. Okay. Germany, Ireland, and Japan. Pakistan has I don't think that's no true. outside liquor laws. You can drink wherever you want in Islamabad. Dude, I'm guaranteeing you in Moscow. <laughs> you're you know you the want. same propaganda website that you were on last time. <laughs> oh, no. Now I'm spreading my own. <laughs> Tyler for NationGear.ca, your hot from the week. My trolling abilities. I posted a pizza that I cut real bad on my Instagram, and people freaked the hell out. It was funny. It was Woo! awesome. Friday, baby! Yeah, let's celebrate Friday! Woo! That was the worst cutting job of all time. <laughs> it was really funny. People were so mad at me. It was one of those ones where, like, I'm glad I don't have OCD because I saw it. I'm like, oh, people aren't going to like that. <laughs> Liam, for NationGear.ca, your hot performer of the week. My hot performer of the week is going to be in relation to my cold performer of the week. The movie Dune, the second one. What a movie. The cast is unbelievable. Why is that so funny? <laughs> it should get extra marks, by the way, to make up for the fact that you feel so good even after the negativity of the seat. Yeah, the yeah like- and the fact I sat through a two-hour and 45-minute movie huge for you. without leaving the theater. What do you give it out of 10? I get oh, I, I, my, I do my vote now. Five, Rick, on my oh, Letterboxd my account. You can follow me at Liam Horvin 96. Liam dot movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's his fifth Instagram account. His fifth Instagram account is Liam dot movies. <laughs> Yeah, four out of five. I thought it was great. I thought it was but fantastic. Probably got like five out of five because I had to make up for the fact you had the uncomfortable chair. You were already <laughs> negative with sitting there. You're sitting there. The popcorn's good, yeah. but the chair is uncomfortable, and you're pissed. Yeah, the cast was unreal. Well, Rebecca Ferguson, what an actress. I've never seen a Timothy Chalamet movie before besides doing one. He's so good. I'd go Timothy to war for that guy. Chalabon? <laughs> Yep, that's the one. <laughs> yep, that's is that the French you, pronu- is yeah, that's that, the French that's pronunciation? That's how the French say it. Is Charlotte that how bon. you say his name? Cinnabon. Yes. Well, to be fair, Matthew Olivier is from Mississippi, so are we sure Timothy Chalabon's from France? <laughs> <laughs> I yes. don't. Is that look, how uh, look him up. J- like, look at the spelling look at of the it. Dune actors. Chalabon. I know. I know who he is. is it Chalamet. Chalamet. 
Chalabon. Chalabon. He's from New York. <laughs> Point proven, and he's older than what me. Point. Chalamet. That he's not French. He is Chalamet. French, though. He's not. He's he's. Oh, he's a French American actor. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a gun. You got to read the uh, whole line. Please, was cook that. That was good. Uh, that's two son of a guns out of you today. I think. All right. This has not been a good episode. Right, here's for me. your button for you, Liam. He's a hot guy. Yep. Timothy C. Well, next week guy. for a ne- for next week, there better be a son of a gun. <laughs> I want to import the buttons off that roadcaster over there onto this one. Uh, Nation Dan for NationGear.ca, <clears throat> hot from the week. A uh, guy that I love to pick on a lot and think that he doesn't do great with the media, but uh, John Tortorella for standing up to one Wes McCauley this week and then refusing to leave the bench. It was just fun content all around. And, Eagle and maniac. Which one, Not Rick? The ref. Exactly. The ref. The ref. Which I one need, has yeah, the no, no, yeah, ego. definitely. Definitely the ref. That was a battle of egos, and one got kicked out. Ten minutes into the game, I don't. There's very little he could say. Agree with that. I, I, I would say the yes if I had to get my two cents in. Could there. Could you imagine if he got it started officiating soccer? Coaches should have to like straight up <laughs> oh, kill a guy holy. to get suspended from the league, in my opinion. My right, nation gear, hot. right, Tyler? That's right. Yes. My nation gear.ca hot performer of the week is Tyler. You know why? They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. Before we that wrap up the podcast, sense. everybody, we are going to do a quick score prediction tomorrow's game against the Colorado Avalanche. Nation Dan, you're up first. I'm going to say 5-3 Edmonton win with an empty net goal. Liam Horbin. Lehman, you're up. Score prediction. 6-4. Tyler. I'll say... <clears throat> Oh, damn, I want to say 6-4. I'll say 5-4 Oilers, but shout out to Liam today. I said, Liam, I think tomorrow I'm going to bet on the adjusted over. I said, I'm going to take over nine and a half goals. And Liam goes, no, you're not. That's crazy. But I do think it could be like a 6-4 game. <laughs> yeah, what? Not my finest hour. No, it is hard. We're having a rough day today. Math it's not been you, great. Man. It's not been great, Rick. It's because I quit coffee. So now my head is just spinning. Why would you do that? It's a long story. All right. You should have heard what coffee I had to say about him. Mm. Next week's cold performer. Nice. Rick, your Nation Gear .ca hop from the week. Oh, we went already. Your score prediction, I meant. I'll go 6-3. All right. 4-2 Oiler win. Lock it in. Put a shekel on it. I think probably the odds are pretty good. 4-2 win coming at you. Have a great weekend, everybody. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.